Oh, it's an exciting day. We are talking about the brand new DJI Doc 3 and the Matrice 4D series. We're gonna talk about specs. We're gonna talk about features. Make sure you stick around. Hey everybody, David here from Aerial Influence. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today, we are talking about the DJI Doc 3 and the Matrice 4D series. For those that don't know, the Doc series, essentially it is like a drone in a box. You take the Doc 3, you place it somewhere. The drone can be deployed from the dock. The drone charges when it lands in the dock. So it really is a, a solution for those of you looking for a drone in a box. Now, obviously this is the third generation dock from DJI. The original dock used the Matrice 30 series as the drone that went into the box. So obviously it was a little bit bigger of a box because you got a bigger drone, so you need more space. Then they refined things a little bit. They moved to the dock two and they used the Matrice 3D series. And they introduced a lot more features with the dock two, so significant upgrade. And DJI has had enough success with these docks that they moved on to the brand new DJI dock three. Now the Doc 3 uses the brand new Matrice 4D series. That's the Matrice 4D and the Matrice 4TD. The TD obviously is the thermal version. But we want to start off by talking about one of the big upgrades on this new Doc 3 with the Matrice 4D series is that it is mobile. So in the past with the other docks, they're really meant to be set somewhere, left, hook it up to RTK, hook it up to power, hook it up to internet, and then you leave it. So it's not meant to be moved around all that kind of stuff. It is meant to set it and forget it. But now with the new Doc 3, it is mobile. You can pop this thing on the back of a truck. You pull up, you open up the drone, and you are ready to fly. A great use of this would be public safety. So say there's a festival, they can pull up with their dock and be ready to go in a matter of minutes. But I could also see this being used at construction sites, by surveyors, all sorts of different industries that could use a Doc 3. And if they need it to be mobile, they got it. I also wanted to point out that while the Matrice 4D series drones are designed specifically for the dock, so it'll, they'll land, they'll charge up in the dock itself, which is a great feature, but the drones can also be used without the dock. So you could buy like a standalone package, an RC plus two enterprise remote, uh, some extra batteries, and you can fly this thing just like you can any other DJI drone. You're getting a great remote with the DJI RC plus two enterprise remote. This thing is big, it's beefy, it doesn't feel like you're gonna drop it out of your hands. There are spots to put lanyards. You got an HDMI out on here so you can run it to a big screen in case you don't want people watching over your shoulder. And it's got an internal battery, but it's also got an external battery that you can pop in and keep you flying for hours and hours. And the big plus of using the 4D series drones, one of the biggest one is that they are IP55 rated. So you can fly them in rain, you can fly them in snow, we have flown the Matrice 30 series for several years now. It's IP55. I'll go out, I'll fly that thing in snow, in rain. Don't go out when it's it's too bad. You don't wanna press your luck too much, but it really is a great plus to have one of these drones with an IP55 rating. The Doc 3 is actually IP56 weather rated. So both the drone and the dock are gonna be fine when you are out in rain or snow. And speaking of the elements, both the dock and the drones have an operating temperature from negative 22 all the way up to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. So really in all sorts of elements, you're gonna be doing good. On the dock three, it actually has a rain sensor on top and a weather sensor on top. So it's gonna tell you how fast the wind is blowing or how much rain is actually coming down. And you can set those parameters, you can change them. So say if it's above 27 miles per hour, you don't want the drone to deploy. Or if there's too much rain coming down, you can set that parameter as well. And the dock three won't launch the drone. So along with that IP56 weather rating, there are other safety measures that you can take to make sure that you're operation is safe. We also got to mention DJI Flight Hub 2. So Flight Hub 2, if you've got the Doc 3 and the drone, this is really the way that you are going to control everything. You're going to be able to set up flight missions. You're going to be able to keep track of other pilots. You can add several drones to Flight Hub 2 and you can see them all and you can control the drones themselves from Flight Hub 2. And DJI says this is all incredibly secure. They are only using US-based servers to store any information and nothing is heading outside of the United States. So I know security is a big concern for a lot of people, especially like public safety agencies. So DJI has really got things buttoned up and DJI Flight Hub 2 is very secure. For the drone itself, you've got a flight time of 54 minutes 
performance that is pretty fantastic for a drone these days. The battery technology is just getting better and better. And this drone, they say it's rated for 54 minutes now. Realistically, depending on what you're flying in, you could see closer to like 42 to 45 minutes of actual flight time, but still that is one of the leading flight times of any drone on the market right now. In sport mode, the drones can go up to 42 miles per hour, but if you have it in sport mode, it's gonna turn the sensors off around the drone and that could mean bad things for you if you're flying too close to anything. But if you need to go somewhere really, really fast, you do have the option of flipping it into sport mode. I mentioned all of the obstacle avoidance sensors. They are all over this thing, 360 degrees, and they are there to help you. They're there to tell you if there is something in the proximity of the drone. You're gonna see flashes on the screen. You're gonna hear voice prompts from the remote itself saying, hey, you gotta look out, there's something close by. And it's also nice because on the remote, you'll actually see something in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen that is vision assist. And with vision assist, you are able to look out of several of those sensors. So you can look forward, right, left, back, and down. So say your drone is giving you an indication that there is something close by to the drone. You can then look out of that sensor and see what it is you're getting close to. So that's a big plus with these M4D series drones. For video and remote transmission, it is rated up to 15 miles, which is amazing. And that of course is in perfect conditions, no obstacles in your way, no buildings, no trees, nothing like that. But you likely aren't gonna get quite that far with the transmission range. And really, if you're a part 107 pilot, the rule is you can't fly beyond your visual line of sight. But if you're somebody interested in the Dock 3 system, then you might be flying beyond visual line of sight. You might have jumped through the FAA hoops that you need to go through to fly a drone beyond visual line of sight. So in that case, the longer the transmission range, the better because legally you're allowed to fly beyond your visual line of sight. Dock 3 with the Matrice 4D series, we have RTK antennas built into them. So with the drones in the past, you would sometimes have to add like a little RTK module on top of your drone, but now it's actually built into the drone itself. And I know some people aren't gonna know what RTK is. RTK stands for Real Time Kinematics. And the way we describe it is by saying it's like GPS on steroids. You connect the remote, you connect the DRTK3 base station, you connect the dock, and you connect the drone. So all of those things are connected and they're talking to satellites and they are gonna give you ultra precision on your flights. Now with the Matrice 4D and the 4TD, you get 112 times hybrid zoom. Now, what does that mean, hybrid? Basically, there are three lenses. There is the wide angle lens, there is a medium tele lens, and there is a full tele lens. So when you start at the wide angle, you're gonna zoom a little bit, it's gonna get a little more digitized until you jump to the medium tele lens. Then you're gonna zoom a little bit, it's gonna get digitized, then you're gonna jump to the tele lens and it's gonna be clear again. And then you've got more room even from there to zoom even further up to 112 times. So both of these drones also have laser range finders on them. So what that means is that you can point at something, at a building, at a person, at a car, turn that laser range finder on and whatever you're pointing at, it's gonna tell you how far it is from the drone. It's also gonna give you the lat longitude of wherever you're pointing. And it's even gonna tell you you're above sea level information. So a lot of information can be had from this laser rangefinder, and that is on both of these drones. I also wanna talk about the mapping capabilities of these drones. And essentially both of them, the, the 4D and the 4TD, they are good mapping drones. However, if you're really looking for the precision, if you are really looking for the high quality color maps, you're gonna wanna go with the Matrice 4D series because it has a 20 megapixel micro four thirds sensor. So it is definitely going to be bigger than the sensor on the Matrice 4 TD. It also has a mechanical shutter, which is ideal for mapping because you're gonna get clearer pictures, less blur. And so that's why you would wanna go with the 4D series. Now, like I said, the 4 TD can map. You'll still get a good map out of it. It's just not gonna be as high quality. And the plus for the 4 TD is that you can also do thermal maps. So if you're somebody, if you are in inspection, something like that, and you need to get a map of a whole area and see where the hot or cold spots are, you're gonna be able to do that with the Matrice 4 TD. 
And speaking of thermal on the Matrice 4 TD, you are getting a high resolution 640 by 512 thermal sensor. And you can also upgrade that with super resolution, basically using AI and the software to make the image even clearer. You can do things like isotherm. So you draw a box on the screen. It's gonna tell you the hottest and coldest points within that box. There's a side-by-side -side feature so you can see the color camera and the thermal camera on the screen at the same time. And you have multiple palettes you can choose from. So you can go white hot, black hot, or like a dozen other options there. And you just gotta figure out which one works right for you. Another great feature that both the 4D and the 4TD have is they both do night scene mode. Now, night scene essentially takes all of the light, all of the ambient light, wherever you are, whether that is a street lamp or the moon, or maybe there are house lights that are partially lighting up an area. It's taking all that light and really brightening up the scene. And with the Matrice 4D series, you can actually do color night scene. So on other drones, you'll get something like night scene, but it'll always look like it's in black and white. But with these drones, there's a certain amount that you're able to zoom in, and it's actually gonna be a color night scene. And the further you push in, it will eventually turn black and white as well. But it does have that color night scene which is a really cool feature. And with Matrice 4TD, it actually has a big advantage over the 4D drone because it also has a near infrared spotlight on it, which the 4D does not. Now that spotlight is invisible to the naked eye. You're not gonna see it coming down from the drone, but when you're looking at it through night scene mode, it actually lights up the scene very, very well. So for those doing search and rescue, if you're having to fly at night for certain reasons, this near infrared spotlight is a huge, huge advantage. Let's talk about some of the smart features on this drone you have got object identification where you can point at an area here you're seeing me point to a parking lot it's going to tell you exactly how many cars it sees in that parking lot how many people it sees in that parking lot and it'll actually work with boats too so if you're out on the lake or in the ocean it'll actually be able to tell you how many boats it sees at any given time and to go along with that these drones both have a smart track feature so smart track basically you can touch a car you can touch an object and the drone is gonna continuously follow that object by itself. Now, it's not flying along with that object, so it's not flying along with the car, like something like the follow me feature on some of the consumer drones can do. In the case of the 4D series, it just uses that really powerful zoom lens to latch onto that object and to zoom in and out, keeping it within its sights. The only time you're gonna have problems is if that object goes behind a building or a bunch of trees, something like that, it will sort of have a hard time keeping up. It'll try, but it might not always work so the best thing to do is actually fly as high as you possibly can and just get away from as many obstructions as possible. And if you do that, you'll literally be able to follow that object for miles. These drones have a fly to mode on them where you can point your drone somewhere, you can drop a pin, you can set the speed at which you want the drone to fly, and you can set the altitude at which you want it to end at. You hit the fly to button and it is gonna go right to that spot. It's got terrain follow, so if you're flying along the ground and you want your drone to stay 100 feet above the ground that it sees below, this is what terrain follow is. So if you're flying on flat land, it'll be 100 feet above the ground. If there's a hill, then the drone will go up with that hill. So it's always gonna stay 100 feet above the terrain. It's got cruise control, which is exactly what it sounds like, just like with your car. You set the direction, you set the speed, and it'll continue on that path until you tell it to stop. There is a point of interest mode where you can set a center point. You can decide how far away you are from that center point and how high you are gonna fly, and also the speed at which the drone will circle. So once you hit this point of interest, the drone will just continuously circle that object. So then you're free to control the camera by itself. You don't have to worry about the drone flying as long as you're high enough and there are no obstacles, the drone is just gonna continue to circle. We mentioned mapping before, but these drones are also capable of multi-directional mapping. So instead of just flying one map with the camera straight down, these drones will actually shoot multiple pictures at each spot. And essentially that's just gonna speed up your mapping missions. There are accessories for these drones themselves. You've got a speaker, you've got a spotlight. There are gonna be other attachments as well. And you can actually stack them so you can use both the speaker and the spotlight at the same time. So DJI has really not it out of the park when it comes to the Dock 3 and the Matrice 4D series drones. And I know I've given you a ton of information, but if you're interested in this setup or if you just want to talk to us about it, you got questions about it, make sure you reach out. You see the information on the screen and it's in the description below. I'm doing more videos on the Dock and the drones, so make sure you hit like and subscribe so you can see those as well. We appreciate you stopping by and we'll see you next time.